Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Tuesday, October 10th, and welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. There's a lot of areas I want to cover with you guys today, so we're going to skip the formalities, but I do hope everything is wonderful for everybody tuning in, and those of you who aren't, nonetheless, I'm wishing you all the best. We're going to jump right into this, all right? Now, we're here on National Hurricane Center's homepage. We have two entities out there we're watching for, 92L in the main development region and 93 out there causing havoc in the Gulf of Mexico. We actually have some reconnaissance aircraft headed into 93L, as we speak. So I'm very curious to see what that's going to unveil for us. And we've seen a little bit of a trend to the west-northwest with 92, and we'll cover that here in a second. I will admit, once again, National Hurricane Center is just slightly behind the curve because I'm surprised that we haven't highlighted our upstream wave just back behind Invest 92L because it looks like we could see some development out of that over the next 24, 48 hours, or maybe a little bit closer to Friday the 13th. That is one that I'm closely monitoring because it looks like it could make a close call encounter with the lesser and greater Antilles in the Caribbean and maybe even move a little further west from there. We'll talk all about that here in a second, but these are our two marine areas to watch right now, guys. All right, we're zooming in on 93L. You can see that there is a little bit of a low-level circulation starting to get its act together. You can see some pretty clear indication that there's some cyclonic turning in the winds in the low levels of the atmosphere. You have all that cirrus above it, but then down towards the low levels, you can see a little bit of a circulation coming together right where I have my pen drawn around where I would probably make my lowest central pressure. As it continues to move to the north, it's going to run headfirst into that subtropical jet, something that everyone's been talking about for the last few days as to why we're not going to see development out of this. But National Hurricane Center has highlighted it at a 30% chance of development over the next few days. And I want to emphasize that even though we're not going to get a named system out of it, maybe not just yet anyways, some of the ensembles in our deterministic runs actually do want to develop it into a full-fledged tropical cyclone once it makes its way off the Gulf Coast, Central Florida Peninsula, now into the greater Atlantic closer to Bermuda, we actually could see a tropical storm Sean, unless 92 beats it to the race, we could see tropical storm Tammy decide to take shape out there in the Atlantic. Regardless guys, the key takeaway is we are still going to observe pretty severe weather with this. We're still expecting tropical storm conditions not only along the coast, but into interior parts of the Florida Panhandle, maybe Mississippi, Alabama could see some of this as well, and Central Florida. I'm going to show you that here in a moment, but I want you to make sure that you're paying attention to this, and we are giving it the seriousness or the level of intensity that we probably should, even though it isn't characterized as a full-fledged storm. We can't disregard it. We're still expecting severe weather, isolated instances of funnel clouds, and tornadic activity as well for the Florida Peninsula, localized heavy rainfall to include flooding, and a gale force wind advisory that is going to be out for most of the southeast, in which that means it's another term for tropical storm warning, if you will. Gale force winds are anywhere between 34 to 47 knots, which converts over to approximately 38 miles an hour to 54 miles an hour. Here we are. I'm not too sure why the 12Z Euro has not populated yet. I waited long enough to try to get this video put together to see when it would come in, but I haven't seen it start populating on any of the weather websites I use. So we're going to fall back on the 6Z because we actually can go far enough out into the future to see at least what looks to be the most accurate representation of this system. We're on College of DuPage. We're at the 6Z mean state level pressure with the Euro. There goes our tropical entity or our subtropical entity making its way towards the Big Bend area of Florida closer to Tyndall Air Force Base, Panama City. So as it moves inland, you can see just how widespread the severe weather with this is going to be. We're expecting pockets of heavier rainfall and accumulation between three to four inches. I'll show you the total accumulation here in a moment, but I want you to get an idea that we are seeing a little bit more consolidation with this. We are seeing a larger area of precip involved and severe potential weather extending out through the southeast and all the way down into southern southwestern Florida as well for that matter. And then one little interesting note there, if you watch as we go through the back end, look at that secondary pocket of isolated convection that comes skirting along the Gulf Coast of Texas, Louisiana, New Orleans, Mississippi, and then finally dissipates once it makes its way into the western panhandle of Florida. That's actually Lydia coming back for a second round. She's going to dissipate after making landfall. She has achieved hurricane status over there in the Pacific, preparing to make her way through central Mexico as we speak. And this is the Euro indicating we could see a secondary pocket of organized thunderstorm activity associated with the remnants of Lydia. So it looks like we could definitely see a 
a package deal, not only with what's blooming out over the Gulf of Mexico, but Lydia's secondary wave as it makes its way into the Gulf and scrapes the coastline. All right, here's our total precip accumulation. As we go into tomorrow, you can see all that heavy rain making its way into the panhandle, and some of the areas want to see upwards of three to four inches as this event unfolds throughout the day on Wednesday, and you can see it finally clearing out sometime in the middle half of the day on Thursday, at least for areas most afflicted by the heaviest rainfall. We're still looking at some good accumulation across the Florida Peninsula, especially west and central Florida. It's a little interesting to me that the Euro actually wants to carve out a little bit of lesser precip in this pocket here, if you guys can see those lighter shades or the darker shades of green in between areas of red, yellow, even some purple and magenta colors on either side of that channel. I'm still thinking we're going to see a lot of rainfall, and that's where SPC has the greatest concern for severe weather for tomorrow. Towards the back end of the loop, you can see that other little pocket of thunderstorm activity moving through the coastline of Texas, Louisiana, before becoming absorbed, and you kind of really just can't see the accumulation anymore because of what's left behind by our current tropical storm, or our current tropical system, I'll say, moving through our southeast AOR. All right, so as I mentioned, if you look down to the southeast portion of this page, you can see that for tomorrow, we have an elevated slight risk for severe weather across west and central Florida with a marginal risk overall for most of the peninsula extending into the panhandle northern periphery of the state. What this means is we're going to see those elevated winds anywhere between 35 to 50 miles an hour. Stronger gusts are possible in the strongest isolated instances of thunderstorm activity throughout the day tomorrow. SPC is also identifying the chance for funnel cloud activity along the west coast moving into central Florida. They're forecasting that the tornadic potential with this storm is definitely there. So again, guys, I don't want anyone taking this lightly. Just because National Hurricane Center isn't going to give this storm a name doesn't mean we're not going to see very similar phenomena between the two. Going back to what I'd mentioned with Tropical Storm Ophelia, the main reason they designated that as a tropical storm was to warn people in advance as it took on tropical characteristics. They wanted to start getting those warnings and watches out preemptively so that way people along the coast of the Carolinas and into Virginia could start taking shelter. This is the same instance here. That's why they're putting out different style advisories in wake of this storm as it begins to move through because we don't have full tropical characteristics with it, but the phenomena inside the storm is going to be very similar. 40, 50 mile an hour wind gusts, potentially more, tornadic potential, funnel cloud potential, potential flooding over the Gulf Coast along the panhandle of Florida. I know I'm using a lot of potentials, guys, but we haven't seen it come through yet, and I'm waiting to see what reconnaissance aircraft find in this system. All right, what we're looking at here, believe it or not, is the Climate Prediction Center African Monsoon Year-Round Ensemble product. And the reason I bring this up is I've had a couple people not only on YouTube but on Instagram ask, why has the Atlantic not shut down yet? Well, guys, in part two, the very hot temperatures we've seen across the hurricane season throughout the Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean, if you look at this product closely and you watch as it cycles through its time, as you get into hurricane season, you can see how we have that area of convergent moisture over Central Africa moving off to the west. The reason that we're still seeing wave after wave pop out of there is because it hasn't closed off entirely. This is what's called the African monsoon, which is what's responsible for getting that main development region activity. We're still seeing some pretty good harmaton winds out of the north that's helping to suppress whatever dry air and whatever moisture can come across the Saudi Arabian Peninsula through northern Africa up against this intertropical convergence zone that's over the African Peninsula to its entirety. And then out of the south, we also have those winds from the southern hemisphere trying to force and wedge that moist air into that spot and it only has one area to go and that's west as the northerly winds come in and the southerly winds come in it has that only westerly component to take as it moves off the coast and once it gets into the favorable conditions of the main development region we don't have a lot of shear out there we obviously have good moisture content in the atmosphere at all levels we're still going to see some fairly decent waves coming out of there and that's why we're going to move into the next segment and talk about the Atlantic a little bit more first things first let's take a look at the ensembles guys for that Atlantic area you can see that the GFS is spreading our ensemble agreement out not only for 92L but also for that system back behind it and there's a lot of members that want to take it a little closer to the lesser Antilles which is why it has my attention. I've also noticed over the last 24 hours that the GFS in particular has lost a lot of confidence on anything coming out of the Caribbean. You can still see some ensemble members highlighting a potential area of development but in comparison to what we saw yesterday even it's been kind of trending down. It's losing confidence out there and kind of putting a little more emphasis on what's happening in the Atlantic and what's currently out in the Gulf of Mexico. Do I think we could see a surge in potential agreement that something could come out of there? Absolutely, because it's still highlighted on other models, the Canadian, the Korean, a little bit of indications that we could get some upper level vorticity in there on the icon. So it's not a completely dead case, if you will. We're not dead in the water just yet. 
I'm simply watching it and I'm not going to put a whole lot of energy into that for this video. We'll cover that in a later segment if something else develops. As I mentioned previously, the 12Z Euro has not come in yet, so we're looking at 0Z ensembles. You can see that out in the Atlantic, 92L has very little confidence or little faith put into it by the Euro. It's that secondary wave that wants to develop and we're seeing some decent agreement that we can see that that could push a little further to the west, coming very close to our lesser Antilles. And you can see that the Euro is also containing just a couple of its members to the southern and western Caribbean. So the Euro still has a small little confidence, like a hair of confidence, that maybe there could be some activity down the road. So this is a widespread AOR that I'm keeping a close eye on because we have the Atlantic, Eastern Atlantic to watch all the way through to the Western Caribbean. And that's kind of why I'm broad brushing it today, guys. There's nothing precise out there on any of our model data. So I'm simply showing you where our models are agreeing we should probably pay a little bit of attention to. Last but not least in our ensemble category, we're looking at the 12Z Canadian ensembles because you can see the Canadian operational run is still highlighting something forming up in the Caribbean. I'm not going to show that to you because, again, we're just kind of broad brushing everything, and the Canadian ensembles are still in full agreement. We can see something coming out of the Caribbean, headed towards the Cayman Islands, the Bahama area, Cuba, and then maybe making its way into the state of Florida as well. This has been highlighted on the last few operational runs as well, and the Korean model helps to back this up a little bit, showing itself on 0 and 12 Zulu as well. All right, so if we look out over the main development region, you can see that the icon has a very clear indication of 92L becoming our next named system, but at about the 48 hour mark, you can clearly see a distinct center of circulation with that next personal weather center Nazario area of investigation. I know it's not classified per the National Hurricane Center, but I'm watching it very closely because of the trends I've been seeing over the last two days since about Sunday. You track this through to the end of the loop and you can see 92L making its way into the central Atlantic before trying to move a little bit further to the west, albeit weakening down, but then take a look at how dominant our other feature becomes as it goes towards the back end of this run. You can see a clear cyclonic spin, close center of circulation, and a good wind field around it. This is supported by the KMA and the Euro as well. This is the 0Z European model. You can see that we're expecting 92L to dissipate on this as well, and you can see that that secondary system back behind it does start to gather some intensity, albeit doesn't entirely close off before making its way into the Windward Islands, but we still have a pretty good swath of 20 to 30 knot winds on the north side of this feature. So something worth watching. It still weighs out there. I'm again astonished that National Hurricane Center hasn't even given it that little 10%. We have the Gulf of Mexico system highlighted at 30%. I personally think this deserves at least a 10% margin of error out there as it comes fully off of Africa and begins to make its way westward in the Atlantic just so we can get some official eyes on it. Last but not least, guys, here is the 12Z Korean model. You can see our Gulf of Mexico entity 93L deepening just a little bit further before it collides with our frontal system subtropical jet and then creating havoc for the Florida Peninsula and then maybe once it gets back into the Atlantic it can consolidate a little bit further get into an area of more favorable conditions and become our next name system we're watching that closely on the right hand side of the screen here is future Sean indicated by the Korean model and as you go towards the very tail end of the run here comes our next tropical wave albeit a little harder to identify on this model in particular but you can still see a semblance of some elevated winds it does seem like the KMA wants to try to close off a center of circulation as we get towards the very end of the loop, albeit there's no real wind field associated with it, but you can see a closing in those ice attacks or those streamlines on this model. It also wants to do something very interesting with what we've been mentioning the last couple of days in the Caribbean. So you see that spin begin to develop off the Yucatan Peninsula and then push to the north. However, the KMA has a very interesting depiction with it. It actually wants it to close off off the west coast of Florida and then bear right in through the Tampa St. Pete, maybe the Fort Myers area, and then deepen down kind of like what our invest area is expected to do now long term once it can make its way fully out of the Gulf of Mexico and into the Atlantic. And then last but certainly not least, we cannot forget the lower 48. We're still watching for that Colorado low to develop over the Great Plains. And as you can see, the Pacific Northwest is already doing battle with it. We're seeing areas of moderate to severe winds along the higher terrain features, that cross barrier flow that we've identified in the last couple of segments of Weather Center, and some areas of higher terrain snowfall, as well as embedded precipitation through some of the front range of the Rockies in Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. We're still expecting that we're going to see cyclogenesis somewhere over Nebraska and Kansas before we 
start to see a widespread severe event unfold as the system really gets going and starts to push towards the Midwestern states, the Ohio Valley, and the lower Great Lakes. Mind you, this is the NAM as well. I'm looking at the North American model, the 32-kilometer NAM for this, and we have been seeing very, very good agreement across the models that that's exactly what's going to happen at the same time we really begin to see the impacts in the southeast. You can see it highlighting our tropical, non-tropical entity working its way across the Gulf Coast into Florida. Lots of indications down there. We're going to see some heavy precip, high winds, and embedded severe thunderstorms with that system before it propagates into the Atlantic, posing no further threat to our southeast quadrant of the U.S. We're also thinking it could attract a little bit more cold air off the east coast because we have that cold air damming scenario across the Appalachians. You can actually see a pretty good indication in this high pressure ridge right through here. The terrain goes up in the Appalachians right in through this quadrant of the United States and you can see that there's isobars along the Lee of the Rockies showing that cold air nestled in tucked up against the terrain because as we all know cold air sinks so it's not going to necessarily go over the top of the mountains it's going to hang out there for a little bit and that's why during our tropics talk yesterday we'll have to keep an eye on situations like this because as we get Colorado or Texas lows moving off this direction to the east towards the east coast the warm sectors associated with those storms could create freezing rain events or mixed precipitation events, which are incredibly severe, more severe than a lot of us would like to talk about. Freezing rain is no joke. It could be very dangerous for roadways, for other hazards outside if you're out and about during those situations. So that's something we're going to have to slowly shift gears in once we fully come out of the tropic season and get into fully non-convect wintertime events as we go further and further into November and eventually December and so on. But all right, guys, we're closing out the video today. I know we didn't delve too specifically into a lot of these trouble spots. I wanted to kind of go over everything thing real quick because there really isn't anything precise to hone in right now. We're still seeing the same trends across the board. We're awaiting our reconnaissance data for that system in the Gulf of Mexico. It's definitely worth keeping an eye on and we are expecting tropical storm-like conditions out of it as it gets closer and closer to the Gulf Coast and the Sunshine State of Florida. I also haven't taken my eyes off the other areas of interest, not only in the Caribbean but out in the Atlantic because we could still see some favorable conditions come together and develop something out there. We already have 92L out there. So clearly the area is susceptible for further tropical formation, which is why, again, I don't know why National Hurricane Center hasn't highlighted our upstream cyclone, but maybe we'll see that at 8 p.m. tonight or first thing tomorrow morning like we saw with our Gulf of Mexico area of interest. I hope everything has been wonderful for everybody out there. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for another segment of Weather Center, but until then, guys, you know the phrase. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.